Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to the Sunday recap, my weekly vlog where I talk a little bit about my last week in games. As always, we'll start with some EVE Online and I played around an average amount of EVE Online. My main focus has been on doing a bit more exploration and well, a couple of drops do make uh, an exploration week a good week, especially when I had some energized adaptive nanos that dropped like worth uh, 135 million or something like that. That just basically makes up for a whole week of, of mining or missioning or anything like that. Uh, considering the, the amount of time spent, I am pretty happy with that and I, I'm still feeling that uh, what I think is the effect of Into the Abyss where more solo players are going into the abyss and that leaves more room for people to explore and find good combat sites. I'm doing so in the Odo Jackdaw. Uh, not the best ship for the job, but it gets the job done very nicely. And it's only a destroyer which makes this type of exploration really accessible to anyone that wants to do it, in my opinion. On top of that, I saw uh, on the subreddit that there's an animated skin coming for the Jackdaw. So that's one of those skins that I'll have to buy just because I fly the ship that often. It's the same with the Orca. That is my go-to mining ship if I do mine. And so I did buy what I consider to be the nicest skin for the Orca as well. I'll do the same for the Auto Jackdaw. That um, yeah, looks really amazing and uh, is, is absolutely a, a ship that I fly quite often. Something that I might actually do is maybe try to make a Gila like really super specific for Sanchez sites you know get the resistance up then use all the uh, for, for the for the right um, for the right damage types and then try to to really up uh, my damage potential with the uh, the slots that I open up there it, it's something that I should look into as well I think um, just because I could then have a nice comparison how does the other jackdaw perform compared to that Gila that is, is probably going to just blast through those sites so quickly that is going to be pretty crazy but it's maybe a ship that I should do as well one of the aspects of EVE Online is that you always want to get as much efficiency out of it as possible. Uh, BBCs, yeah, they're selling okay, nothing too crazy, uh, but we are still getting some pretty good sales, especially for the Orca. That's up in price by quite a lot, so for some reason people are buying and making a lot of Orcas, and that's great for my BBC business. And then next to that, just a little bit of maintenance for PI, that's what I regularly do. Uh, at the moment, it is EVE Down Under as well, so if you can, keep an eye on what's coming out of there from uh, for information uh, on EVE Online and it does look like structures are back on the roadmap at this point so yeah for this summer uh, you know my tip would be keep an eye on advanced PI see what they're doing and and try to spot the buy opportunities because if something like the um, uh, the propaganda towers come out and all of those do take PI materials then we are talking about a lot of demand all of a sudden especially if you can put them anywhere around structures then I mean you're going to see them pop up uh, almost everywhere I think and, and that is potentially one of those really good investments. The disadvantage is of course it is different from the big structures uh, that we know now and perhaps CCP might want to do something about the mineral situation at the moment. That's a theory that I think could hold water and so that's something to keep in mind as well as soon as those things hit uh, CC. I think looking at what they're planning as, a, as an industry cost is going to be very important because, because we could switch PI or uh, minerals and it's going to be, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's interesting. I think it could go either way. Next up, we have a little bit of World of Warcraft as well, mostly just more maintenance. I am basically waiting for the pre-patch to hit and uh, to see what kind of content we can get out of there. I think stuff like War Mode comes out, the new talents, the stat squish. So it, it is looking quite interesting and uh, that's what I'm focusing on. So between now and then I'm actually trying to work on some other things. And uh, what I did is of course my daily emissaries just for me. Uh, it's something that I can do every day. You get a chance at the legendary which hasn't dropped in, in many weeks uh, at this point. But you are slowly earning another one. I think if I can get one more out of it then I would be pretty happy with that. And of course it's, it's a nice flow of gold for me as well. Uh, having my follower earn me 90 extra gold for every world mission that I do. So that is what I've been mostly doing. Uh, there was a quest in Silitus as well that basically unlocks uh, all of the potential of your uh, artifact weapon. So I went and did that. It's, it's a very, very short quest line that you do in Silitus. Uh, you basically have to do a couple of quests, go talk to Magni. We fly up to the 
uh, to the hilt of the sword and there we draw out all the fell energy we take that into our artifact weapon and that basically supercharges the weapon and uh, every trait uh, and everything is, is completely unlocked at that point until of course at some point we can expect the weapon to no longer be able to take that strain and then we'll uh, we'll we'll have to uh, yeah give back all of that power that we are currently wielding at the end of the expansion for legion so i think it's pretty cool it's a nice little story nice little cutscene gives you something to do and uh, just you know for the last week couple of weeks until the pre-patch will feel very powerful and everyone can very easily have that fully unlocked weapon available so that's what i've been doing in the world of warcraft and yeah it's going to be pre-patch we'll see oh if i'm not mistaken for the pre-patch there's also like some scenarios that are going to be unlocked like um uh, the, those preparations for the wars and things like that so that looks like it's going to be fun to play as well maybe even make a couple of videos out of that and then of course in mid-august we'll have the actual expansion and uh, then we'll be able to go and uh, yeah get started on our woe grind up to 120. Next up we have a little bit of Diablo 3, really haven't played a lot of Diablo 3 last week, it was basically finishing the uh, season with the Necromancer, so all I had to do was beat a, uh, was it level 20 Greater Rift or something like that, super super easy to do uh, when you have the 6 pieces, which is something that I did grind for just a little bit through Kedala, so you earn those blood shards, then take the gamble on uh, chests and pants and then eventually uh, some of those pieces will drop and they happen to be part of the set so that was really nice once you have that i mean the rest of the season to earn the basic rewards is really really easy uh, i think i could have gone in straight away what i did do was a little bit of extra grinding as well to make sure i've got legendaries in every slot that my nice cube was filled up and well I don't have any motivation to keep going to do even more with that Diablo 3 character. So if I ever feel like doing some more Diablo, then I would probably start another character for this season. Just because I've seen what the gameplay is like with the set, the optimal gameplay you could say. The, the one that, that'll push the rifts the furthest. And I, I don't enjoy it. I, I can already tell that it is not my playstyle at all. So that is why I stopped. I, I, took my own spin on that with corpse explosion which is buffed up and then you've got the corpse lances that destroy everything as well and um, you know I've actually like minions so I grabbed a couple of minions as well uh, first the golem to give me extra corpses which I think is very nice and uh, then the skeletons just because they s stop some incoming damage and I can use them for an extra explosion as well if I end up in trouble so yeah Diablo 3 it's still a very fun game I try to grab every season but so far I've never really found a motivation to uh, start a second character or anything like that and this time for the necromancer i really don't feel any motivation to do any extra grind to maybe try and get into higher rifts or, or things like that i'm happy that i did it uh, but it was basically uh, a one week season uh, for me at this time Staying with the Blizzard games, I also played a tiny little bit of Hearthstone, just a couple of solo adventures that I did in the Witchwood. Um, yeah, a little bit with the tracker, which is fun, but still uh, quite RNG heavy. You are dependent on getting the right cards in order to make the trapper work and to get her uh, like uh, up against the final boss, especially like the Jade Shuriken is really powerful, but you also need that secret which reduces the cost of the trapper uh, ability uh, to one and then that you can use it twice um, in, uh, in, in, in a single turn. That is something that really doesn't happen all that often I must say and so I also did a game with the Houndmaster and I basically think that he is the most powerful the easiest class to play with just because he has that ability to summon those hounds with charge which gives you that early game control but then the cards that he will get as a hunter it's often uh, to do with beasts and you of course summon beasts from your uh, basic power as well and as a result you do have those crazy rush decks those those very powerful beast combinations that are almost always available uh, for the hound master so that was actually very fun uh, I just wanted to try one and beat that solo adventure again without any trouble 
uh, with the hound master so that, that one is really really powerful and if you feel like you need a win then i would definitely suggest that you uh, get started on the hound master so for me hearthstone is still fun i also played a, an arena a couple of weeks ago because we got a free one but i really can't invest that much time in the game at this point and definitely no money so for me hearthstone yeah there's still some more videos coming out of that and from time to time i'll do a quick solo adventure just to have some fun but it's basically on the back burner at this point and uh, if another expansion would come out or if another solo adventure would come out i would love to start to play that but uh, no more than that when it comes to hearthstone at this point which leads me to skyrim i've also played a little bit more skyrim at this point i'm still preparing to get my character ready for a couple of quest changes that i want to do and that i might want to film i probably want to film them um, and I think I do want my enchanting up to 100 so that I'm super comfortable, very powerful. Not put uh, like a double damage on the bow, that just becomes completely overpowered. But definitely the armor give me some resistances, give me uh, some extra HP, you know, just make sure that I can do a good job uh, that way. And uh, that, that's going to be the goal. I finally got a weapon that has soul trapping on it. So I disenchanted that, put that on a reserve bow. And so now I can finally get started on on uh, grinding some souls and getting my enchanted to 100 but i also switched out my follower because i got the star of azura and i really like that that follower that you get there uh, the priestess of azura because she's uh, a, a mage that uses spell spells and um, with her light armor i think i can give her just a couple of rings with muffle so that uh, you know the enemies don't spot her um, before they spot me and as a result i think we'll be able to have a very nice ranged sneaky team with high damage but that will need to use our mobility a little bit as well uh, when it comes to fighting tougher opponents uh, in the storylines that i want to do so yeah that's what i've been doing i'm on the right track i've got the right follower now it's a matter of getting that enchanting up and then deciding on on giving me something that'll allow me to comfortably do all of those quests um quest chains but uh, without being completely overpowered i don't want to one shot every dragon that i encounter because i put like plus 67 weapon damage uh twice on 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 my bow or something like that so we're going to be careful not to be super overpowered but to basically feel safe when it comes to actually taking damage and sneaking around and all of that good stuff so i do look forward to that but i still have a little bit of work to do before i can get started on my recordings for skyrim which leads me to my sixth and final game yeah i did find the time to play six games last week feels pretty good uh, and just like with skyrim i've been playing some stellaris in preparation of starting another series about stellaris as well so this time it is a machine race oh what a surprise i feel like the machine races are just you know they have so many advantages that i absolutely love they take away some of the annoying management that you sometimes have to do especially with the leaders those are immortal except for very few very rare occasions where they break down so you don't have to worry about re-recruiting the right leaders and things like that and this time we are fully invested in research so it's it's everything uh, you know all the the, um, the traits and everything that I could take that would help on research that's what I grabbed and uh, I have a few really uh, good uh, researches as well at the moment so we're at like plus 40 percent plus 50 percent for all of those everything's bonus like crazy we also took discovery um, as our first uh, first category uh, for what is called the unity i think it's called and so now we are definitely ahead at this point of uh, anyone else in the universe except for the fallen empires who are always overwhelming to you but we are very far ahead in research and that's like a complete turnaround from how i normally experience uh, stellaris i usually focus a lot on expanding becoming very big very quickly and uh, as a result i usually do lag behind in research this time it's the exact opposite some of the the other empires are as big as i am so i still managed to do a decent job on expanding uh, but uh, all of them lag behind in research which does feel good of course i'm hoping that i can get battleships pretty soon so my largest uh, large, largest ship class right now 
is the cruisers uh, but uh, it's it's a little bit different as well I didn't take exterminators or anything like that it's just a straight up machine race and I'm actually hoping to do more cooperation this time I usually go for let's just try to grab the entire universe kill everything that that we encountered this time we are going to try to like maybe form a federation or something like that we'll see how that plays out um, but uh, yeah I, I look forward to covering this Stellaris game I actually already have a couple of, of, of cool videos about it like uh, introducing the new race and then um, some cool events that, that were happening at the moment it's a build-up phase not much happening and I'm basically uh, asserting my dominance because of my better research compared to everyone else but we'll see what, uh, what happens next and uh, I'll definitely try to make it work for another Stellaris series because I enjoy those I enjoy making them I love the game especially with the changes it's a lot more stable you can build up uh, with a bit more confidence you can put up some nice defensive chokeholds and things like that so for me yeah massive improvements uh, with uh, with like the latest few patches of Stellaris and uh, a new series in the works I hope I find the time to uh, to make all of that work and to bring it to you guys quickly and that was my last week in games thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all next time <laughs>